I saw in this video, I will talk about a second moment of the normally distributed random variable, and I proved that the second moment, which is this function here, equals mu squared plus sigma squared for a normal random variable. So what we want to show is what does the second moment, which is the expectation of x squared equal to, and expectation of x squared is this integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared times f of x over x, and the f of x here is the probability density function, and in this case we're looking at a normal random variable, and this is the probability density function for the normal random variable, so this integral here is x squared times f of x, and we're summing over x from negative infinity to infinity. So, in order to compute the complicated integral here, let's first assume that mu is 0 and sigma is 1, and we will have a simpler looking integral here. So, in order to compute this integral, we can use integration by parts. So, let's define f of x as equal to x and g of x equal to negative e to the power of minus x squared over 2. And we also need to know the derivatives. So, derivative of f of x is just 1. And derivative of this function here is x times e to the power of negative x squared over 2. And you can check back if you the antiderivative of this is this function here. So in order to use integration by parts, we want to write out our initial integral in terms of the two functions that we defined. So this is the integral that we're interested in, and here I just wrote minus n to n instead of infinity. And also there's a constant here, but we don't have to worry about the constant. So we can see that this integral can be broken up this way, and you see why we're doing it is because x here will be our f of x, and this term here is equal to the g prime of x. So therefore the integral here equals the integral from negative n to n of f of x times g prime of x over x. And now we can use the integration by parts formula because we know that this type of integral here equals this function, which is f of n times g of n minus f of negative n times g of negative n and minus integral here. So plugging in our definitions for f of x and g of x, we get the following term. Again, how we got this, remember that f of x is x, so f of n is just n, and here g of n is this term here, so it would be g of n is minus e to the power of negative n squared over 2, so that's how we got the negative sign here, and this is the exponent term. The next term is minus f of minus n times g of minus n, so f of minus n is just minus n, and g of minus n is minus minus e to the power of negative minus n squared over 2, so we can have minus minus here, we'll have a positive term, and minus n squared over 2 is just n squared because it's a squared term. So this is how we got this term here. And this term we just plug in f prime of x, which is just 1, and g of x here, so this is our f prime of x, which is 1 times the g of x, which is this term. So you can see we have these two terms, they're the same, so minus n times e to the power of negative n squared over 2, and same here, minus n times e to the power of negative n squared over 2, so therefore we have, when we combine those two terms, we get minus 2 times n times e to, to the power of n squared over 2, and minus the integral. So here we have negative sign, negative sign, therefore this whole term becomes positive, so we can put it in the front, and then we have minus the second term here. So now we want to compute this whole expression. Therefore, as you remember, we were trying to transform our initial integral, which is here x squared times f of x for a normally distributed random variable with mean 0 and sigma equal to 1. So again, remember, this is the PDF of a normal random variable with mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1. Therefore, mu and sigma don't appear in this integral. And here we have a constant term, therefore we can take it outside of the integral as a multiplier, and we're left with this term here inside the integral. And it's difficult to compute an integral when it's expressed in terms of from negative infinity to infinity, 
So instead, we can express this integral as a limit of an integral going from negative n to n over x as n goes to infinity. Because that's the same as here, n goes to infinity, so here we have negative infinity, and here we have positive infinity. So we just showed here what we just showed previously what this term is equal to in terms of integration by parts, and that's how we obtained this expression. Remember, we obtained it by defining f of x and t of x and using integration by parts to obtain this expression and plugging in our function, so that's how we got this term. So this is our transform integral that we want to compute. And here, because this is just subtraction, we can split this term apart. So here again, because we have limit as n goes to infinity, we can express it back in terms of infinity. Because we just plugged in infinity for n, so we have integral going from minus infinity to infinity. And we just put the constant inside the brackets. And here we have our second term. And we keep the limit here expressed in terms of limit in terms of a function of n as n goes to infinity. So what is this term here? Well, you must know that the function inside the integral is just the probability density function of a standard normal random variable. So we can just express it as f of x. And the term here stays the same. Well, what does this equal to? I mean, this is the probability density function of x. And we're summing over x from negative infinity to infinity. So we're summing up the probabilities over the whole range of x. Well, the sum of all probabilities, as you know, should be equal to 1. Therefore, we can see that this term equals 1 because that is just the sum of all probabilities. And that sum has to equal 1. And we still are left with this limit here. So we want to compute this limit as n goes to infinity. Well, as you know, when we have a negative power, we can express it as 1 over that variable to that power, but we no longer have the negative sign. So we have limit of 2n divided by e to the power of n squared over 2 as n goes to infinity. Well, as n goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity. But in the denominator, we have e to the power of n squared over 2 and n goes to infinity. So this term here goes to infinity much faster than the numerator because we have infinity squared. So clearly a large number divides this goes to infinity, but this goes faster. So a large number divided by a much larger number since it's squared and also it's e to the power of that. So we're dividing by a very, very large number. So we get zero. So what we just showed is that this integral equals one minus zero equals one. And as you can see, this integral here is the second moment for the standard standard normal random variable with mean zero and standard deviation one. So we show that the second moment of a standard normal random variable equals to one. Well, we can express it as zero squared because this is zero plus one squared. This is one, so this is still equal to one. And you can see that zero was the mean of a standard normal random variable. So this can be expressed as mu squared and standard deviation is equal to one for a standard normal. So this can be expressed as sigma squared. So we show that the second moment for a standard normal equals to mean squared plus sigma squared. But we were interested in a proof for the general case where the mean is not necessarily zero, it's equal to mu and sigma is here. This is the standard deviation. It's not necessarily equal to one. So how do we compute this integral? Well, we can apply transformation in order to make the integral simpler. So in order to get rid of this complicated term here, let's define y equal to x minus mu over sigma squared. And then we need dy, well, dy over, d, dy over dx is the derivative of this function, which is just 1 over sigma. So then dy is just equal to dx over sigma. So because we need to transform our integral, which was expressed in terms of x, we want to know what is now x in terms of y. So we can multiply both sides here by sigma. And then the mean will go to the other side. So we get x equal to mu plus sigma times y. And also we had dx in our integral. Well, just multiply both sides by sigma here, and we have dx equals sigma times dy. So this is our transform integral for the general case when we apply the variable transformation. Again, x is equal to mu plus sigma times y, and here we have x squared, therefore we plug it in here, and this term is squared. And also we had y equal to x minus mu over sigma. So we define y equal to x 
minus u over sigma. So I can see here that is just that, that term squared. Therefore, here we just plug it in y instead of the term, so we get a simpler looking exponent e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And here we have dx, so we want to now have integral in terms of y and dy. And we found that dx is equal to sigma times dy, therefore we have this term here. And as you see, these sigmas will cancel out. So here I cancel out the sigmas. And I expand this by opening the bracket. So this is a plus b squared. So that's equal a plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. Therefore, we have here, when we open the brackets, we have mu squared plus 2 mu times sigma y plus sigma squared times y squared. And we have the rest of the term here. Well, because this is just a summation here in the bracket, it means we can split this expression into three integrals. So the first integral has mu squared as a multiplier, and since mu is a constant, we can take it outside the brackets. Let's look at this term here. While y is not a constant, since this is we're integrating over y, but 2 times mu times sigma is a constant, so we can take this outside of the integral as a multiplier. And looking at the third term, while y is not constant, but sigma squared is constant, so we also take it outside the brackets as a multiplier. So this is our long expression when we apply variable transformation and open up the brackets. But now let's look what it equals to. Well, let's look at this term here. Well, you need to know that this is the probability density function for the standard normal, as I said previously. So here we just have f of y times dy, where f of y is the probability density function for the standard normal. Let's look at the term here. Well, we have y times this term, which is the same. It's again the PDF for the standard normal. So this integral here equals y times f of y. And same for the third term, we have y squared and we have the PDF of a standard normal, so this is y squared times f of y squared. Well, now this easily simplifies to this expression, and that is because in the first term we just have f of y and we're summing over y from negative infinity to infinity, and that must equal 1 because we're summing over all the probabilities over the whole range of y, so sum of all probabilities must equal to 1. In the second term here, this whole integral is just the expectation of the standard normal and that is equal to mean of the standard normal, which is defined as zero, so this integral must equal zero. Well, and here we have the second moment for the standard normal, and we just showed previously that this is equal to one, therefore here we have one. So in the end, this simplifies to mu squared plus sigma squared. So there we go, we showed that the second moment for a normal random variable equals to mean squared plus sigma squared.